Coming to you live from sunny Arizona. The Steve Rude Show is now live. All right, people, here is Steve Rude himself. Aren't you lucky? So today is going to be an extraordinary day. Here comes the flow hard right now because she's a camera hog. You know, the beagle, the half beagle dachshund. Today is going to be a day different from all others, and I'll tell you why. But first, I'm going to give you an analogy from the show Night Gallery, if you people remember that. Um, the very first show of the second season featured Clint uh, Baylock uh, Howard. And you guys know him, the little guy from Star Trek, the Tranya, all that. Um, and he was, in a, he was in a particular show called The Boy Who Predicted Earthquakes. And the... The premise of the show was a kid that knew things that no one else knew. And so the, <clears throat> they would um, they would feature his day-to-day -day life, which was very boring. And the producers said, the producers were urging him to get to the point, like I'm doing right now. Um, <clears throat> and the point was, uh, at the very end of, this, of the show, that episode, he goes, today is going to be a day like no other. There's going to be a time when there's universal peace. No one's going to fight. There's no more wars. And everyone's going to get exactly what they want and basically live in paradise for the rest of their lives. But what they didn't know is that the sun was going nova and the earth was going to come to a complete end. And that's why he gave them the good version. You guys get it? Of course you do. I have a very smart, smart audience. <clears throat> and going with the theme of uh, something you've uh, never quite seen before, I'm going to explain why Jack Kirby is something that some of you have never really looked into and why this guy is so good. Now, you know him as a guy that did things like this right here. You know, very exaggerated, a lot of squiggles, a lot of uh, anatomy that was <clears throat> contrary to what most academic artists consider and use in their drawings for anatomy. Kirby went beyond that. But I'm going to show you why he, <clears throat> all his stuff is, is reduced can be reduced to very simple shapes, the same shapes that every artist uses in comics or any kind of illustration work um, to start off their figures. Comic book artists are expert at breaking down the mannequin. <clears throat> and before we go into detail with our drawings, we break everything down to a mannequin shape. And through these drawings right here, this one and then two others that are all Jack Kirby's artwork, I'm gonna show you what he's got that makes him so good and so fundamental at what he does. So let's get into it right here. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you something here that um, I'm going to block one of them out so you can't see it. Okay. Remember I was talking about fundamentals and in, in gesture in mannequins. Okay. Well, that's what the demon number one figure breaks down to. That's it. This is the same thing that everyone else does, except it's done without the blacks, without the squiggles. Now, you can see that Kirby <clears throat> can be reduced to everything else everyone else does, okay? And <clears throat> there's an animator trick that everyone knows about, because my audience is smart, and that is to put everything in silhouette. So if you can see still, still, see, still, still see dynamics in this uh, lower drawing here, which is just blacked in, except for the eyes and stuff I put in, you can see that this breaks down to the same fundamental solid drawing that um, that every artist has to do to find out if it works or not. So given that, as lesson number one, I'm going to start drawing this thing with the help of a little tape next to me. I'm going to take this figure and I'm going to show you up front and in person exactly how I would break this figure down. The same thing you saw me do here but it's going to be an actual demo, okay? And to do that, first we raise the paper a little bit. We get a bigger board and we raise it all the way up because we want a side view here. Okay, so you guys ready? Good, I'm glad to hear it. Here's how I would start this drawing out right here. A lot of people start with the head. You have to start with the, the head, of course not. Um, you absolutely don't need to do that. 
I always thought it more sound if you started with the feet. Because if somebody's standing on the ground, isn't that the place to start? Because it all originates from the feet and how you're standing. So here's how, but anyway, in any, in any case, I'm going to break this down in the fundamental way uh, that I've been uh, describing here and show you how it actually happens before your eyes, just like magic. And by the way, <clears throat> because I'm just that good, we have a special guest today that's going to blow your mind. So we're going to get to that in a moment right here. She's actually directly from down under. She actually flew here yesterday. And boy, her arm's tired. So you see what I got so far? It's one thing after another. you got to do a lot of measuring like you do with every kind of drawing that you're copying. Everything is broken down to basic shapes. There's no such thing as a drawing from Rembrandt to Jack Kirby that can't be broken down to simple shapes. And that's going to be your saving grace. And that's what you have to learn how to memorize when you're doing comic book art, especially comic book art. Later on, we're going to show you um, how you can go from a dynamic pose like this to a very straightforward, just a guy standing there pose. So we're going to cover everything here to show you that Kirby knows everything and has for his, his entire life. If any of you have studied his early work, um, Roz told me when I met her um, that some of the drawings that um, I saw from Jack Kirby um, were done when he was 14. It looked like a Rembrandt, I swear. But I'm not going to swear because I'm not that kind of a guy. So there's our mannequin. I suppose we have to put the hands in too. There's the... the um, what do, you, what do you call this thing? The wedge? Yeah, the wedge. The wedge of the hand. And the fingers come out of that uh, with all those little, those, little, those little joints that I love to draw. We have someone whose name is Jonathan that says, Hi everyone, thank you for doing this demo, Steve. I'm glad I could make it to watch live. The finished new world is incredible, by the way. Yeah, well that's, that's, um, that's praise that I really want to hear because we, um, you know, my life is right, right now is all about finishing new Nexus, essentially novels. Um, they're 100 page stories. And I write it, I draw it, I ink it, I letter it, and I supervise the coloring that is mostly done by uh, coloring expert Ace Glenn Whitmore. <clears throat> so if you've seen the book, great. Write in. We'll publish your letter if it's good. If you haven't seen it, um, I, I strongly recommend it, not because just, just because I did it, because I think it's good. But you be the judge. I never put words in people's mouths, except when I have to. So there is the essence of this pose right here. Let's go a little further and do the inner things here. Now, a lot of you may, may not know, because you were born way too late, but Jack Kirby was the Einstein of comics. He did things that are literally impossible for the average person to understand. And since I'm fairly average in, in that way, uh, it blows my mind to even think about the way he did things. So everything is, is, is kind of based off the simple to uh, the little stuff. The, the big stuff first, like what you saw me doing here, to the little stuff that I'm doing now, the little things within the big shapes. Now, it's a good thing my audience happens to be very smart because I don't have to over-explain that, do I? No, I don't. So, <clears throat> from here, now that the basic outline stuff is in there, we put in a few Kirbyisms, okay? And there's a thousand ways this can go. Uh, every time Kirby would draw it, he would do it a little different because he would get bored if he did it the same way every time. I'm just going to literally invent this stuff out of my head because I've studied Kirby for so long. I'm going to add blacks that he uh, that I'm just going to put in by instinct. By the way, this is a, a Derwent um, drawing ivory back pe uh, pencil right here. I love these things. Um, working on this very smooth... Um, uh, layout bond paper is just a joy. So here comes the anatomy that, that he literally had to invent himself. And what he's inventing here are um, 
inner things that, that all muscles have, but he's doing them according to a stronger design sense <clears throat> than being literal. So imagine somebody who goes beyond the literal to form something that's even better than literal. Well, there's not many people that can do that. Most of us are still, still stuck in academics. Um, I'm very much uh, in favor of that. That's how I keep my, my fighting trim. The little things are coming up here. Oh, they're up here, but too late. The little claws in the finger. You guys see what I'm talking about here? Good. Uh, look at this weird display of blacks right here that he put on. Everything is geared towards being dynamic. So if something works and he put it in, he would keep it. And that's how he did all of his, all of his work throughout his 50-year career. A guy that never missed a deadline. I mean, that in itself is, is a freak of nature, given the way people uh, never make deadlines today. So let's put a couple, you know, um, invented lighting things on him. <clears throat> a couple final delineations. And that's how I would do um, uh, this drawing that Kirby did of uh, his character, the demon. We're going to move this drawing aside here and go into the next one. But first, I want to tell you about a book. Brought to you by, no, um, <clears throat> has anyone ever seen this book before? Or have you ever seen this woman's face? Well, she happens to be alive in the studio right now, and she's going to sing a little bit of her song uh, that's copyrighted, so don't even think about copying it. <clears throat> You're my superhero. And here she is live from Australia, and boy, her arm's tired, Katie Toonbridge. <clears throat> hey, everyone. In a world full of darkness, you are my guiding light. You're the one who lifts me up, makes everything feel right. When I'm in trouble, it's you that saves the day. No matter where we go, we can always slip away to a place that lives forever, even if it's in our minds that wipes away the tears we'll take off our disguise you're my superhero hero always gonna take charge let go where you bring me through the night with your cape and epic fights you're my super warrior it's true flying through the heavens in blue take me away from all this crime it's okay, so you're hearing it live, you guys. Now you know what this book's all about, and now you know the face behind it. Uh, she's uh, she's rising to the top of the charts. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you heard it here first, or maybe second, I don't know. Depends on how smart you are. Um, Claw, the murderous master of sound. I love this guy. Now there's no face, there's no front view of any kind, but it's the most dynamic, one of the most dynamic things I've ever seen. So we're gonna break this one down, okay? We did the demon, and now we're gonna do the murderous master of sound, Claw. So watch the way I do this right here. I have not been warming up. I didn't do any preliminary drawings of this thing right here. So we're just gonna have to re rely on my 45 billion years of practice <clears throat> to see if I can pull this off right here. We have someone named Vincent that said, hi Katie. And Jonathan said, awesome. I was not expecting a musical session. Well, that's the thing about the Steve Rude show. You never quite know what you're in for. If you think you're in for the average blah, blah presentation, uh, now you know that we go way beyond that. Back to the murderous master of sound. See it so far, guys? You're all picking that up, and we have a nice close-up going on here, don't we? Yes, we do. Now, so far, this is just outline, okay? It's just basic shapes. The same way that everybody starts out drawing who's um, got an average intelligence that has worked hard over the years. There's our center line right there. Um, our head kind of comes about like that or so. I'm measuring up from here where the, the, where the uh, shoulder is right there. And that's where I'm kind of getting my, um, my locations uh, for. I've always liked to draw this character because... He's just cool. I mean, isn't that what comic books are all about? He's cool. 
There's why he's the murderous master of sound. He could be the nice guy uh, of sound, but he's, he's a bad guy. So he's the murderous master of sound. <clears throat> Look at this guy. This is just incredible. I'm measuring over it to see where this, uh, <clears throat> this area is on the, um, on the window. Now, I, I have to have him grip something here, okay? Um, this, by the way, this was done in 1960. This drawing was done in 1964 when Kirby was at his absolute apex. Uh, did I say 64? I meant 66. So give me a couple years uh, lenience there, okay? So I am having to invent this, uh, <clears throat> this area right here for a claw to be clinging on, because he's a Klingon in this guise. Oh, let's see. So we got a bottom leg right there. You guys follow me so far? Okay. Just outline, just basic gesture mannequin. That's all it is. <clears throat> and because he's the murderous master of balance, we've got him. Let's see if I measure down a little over right here. I can put the other foot in there. And he's got a foot that I'm going to include there. No extra charge. You know. Do you guys find feet hard to do it? Because I think they're murderously hard. Okay, so now that we've got the main, the main elements put in here, what do you think we're going to do next? I'm listening. Okay, I got it. I just picked it up telepathically. <clears throat> now come the interior shapes. Now for a normal uh, arm, say, it would be something like this without breaking the pencil. There's your, um, your elbow joint right there. And this would be the rhythm <clears throat> of, um, of the forearm. And the shoulder would come up like that. There might be a few stri striations in there. Um, and that's the way it would, it would actually look if you had an actual uh, real arm and a real hand there. I suppose i got to draw the hand in now. But no, Kirby would go way beyond that. And look at how he would do it. This is an extrapolation of real life. And there is almost nobody that we know that could do what he did. Because you, be, you, you have to have a certain mentality to be able to um, go beyond reality. And Kirby, another thing he had was <clears throat> his ability to work very fast. Now, I'm not a big believer in, in learning how to work fast, but... Um, <clears throat> The fact that he could do it made him the darling of the business, which I am not. Let's put a couple invented darks up there, like I've been telling you about with the demon drawing. Now, the leg. <clears throat> a couple folds showing it goes this way. See that, guys? Of course you do. Um, <clears throat> anyone who studied the, the various books on how to draw knows all about this, this um, kind of a basic round shape to show uh, perspective in, in a limb. <clears throat> this is a front view, here's a side view. It goes in this direction right here. And that's something you always have to be aware of if you're smart. So let's do some, some figure invention right here. So these are, this is the incredible gift that he had that I'm going to kind of extrapolate from her a little bit on my own. I suppose a, a few artistic fundamentals are going to creep into my, to my version here, but um, you're, you know, to study this guy is to study the secret of the universe. Literally, like, um, I've often made this comment, and in fact I made it at uh, one of Jack's parties, one of his birthday parties in uh, Burbank, California. <coughs> I said, between Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein, there was 200 years that took place between that time. And I said, I'm going to bet that it's going to take another 200 years of those years to find another Jack Kirby, if ever. Smart, huh? Of course. The murderous master of sound. Now let's put a few delineations in here. So that's what Kirby breaks down to right there. You see that, guys? Good. Um, <clears throat> this, 
a lot of these things are done for a very simple reason. There's a lot of generations that came after Jack Kirby died. There's a lot of generations that came way after me. Uh, there's a lot of generations that are really not around anymore, uh, the World War II generation that Kirby came out of. He was uh, 19 years old when he entered World War II. Now imagine what that's like for a 19-year-old kid. He was told to, to, uh, to go off and polish off Hitler <coughs> with, a, um, <coughs> with a helmet and uh, a rifle and maybe a few candy bars for energy. So there you go. We're going to put a few perspective lines in here to show that he's actually resting on something. You know, the, the background part is just as important with, um, <clears throat> with what we're showing, uh, with what we are showing here. This paper is so cool to work on. So there you go, guys. There's a lot of variance in here that I've done just because I'm me and not Jack. Nobody can be Jack. Um, and there you go, okay? We'll give him some boots just, just to show that he's, he's well attired, okay? So there's Claw, the murderous master of sound. Um, for, the, for those of you who don't know, uh, I have studied Kirby endlessly since high school. High school was a, was a ways uh, away for me. So let's take this one down. <clears throat> and now, the creme de la creme, the chef's surprise, we're going to show something very basic and very simple, which is a guy just standing there to show that he can do anything, not just guys in dynamic poses, okay? So we sharpen our pencil, <clears throat> and we're ready to go. But first, we turn this upside down. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I hurt my back, but that's okay. There we go. Now we're, at, we're, now we're at the proper format here. So if you guys can see this, let's get a nice close-up of that, that we're going to be working from him. This is uh, from Kirby's uh, <coughs> so-called Fourth World Series. That has nothing to do with baseball, um, but it is, it is his, his true magnum opus um, that he aspired to his whole life. He finally got the chance in 1970 to, to begin his magnum opus in the form of uh, th four books that he would write, draw, and edit. Now, that's unbelievable. Nobody on the, on the earth can do that nowadays. But Kirby did because of the time that he grew up and the work ethic that he acquired from an early age. Now, who knows where that comes from? I don't know. You don't know. But Jack did, and he practiced it his whole life. You guys ready? <clears throat> now, this is something that I can put a, a, fairly, a fairly simple gesture line here. In fact, I mentioned starting from the feet. Well, let's, let's do that, okay? There is my, there is my gesture line right there of, of, of how the, this, uh, these feet are working here. And then you break down the limbs to the basic shapes that, that, uh, that we all do. This is show you that Kirby is way more fundamental than a lot of you think he is. And even though he had strong uh, stylizations in his art, well, that's kind of what uh, the freedom of drawing comic books allows somebody. Little modifications here and there to correct what I've drawn. <clears throat> okay, so he's standing firmly on his two feet. as we all attempt to do in life. Um, I'm not going to put in any blacks. I'm not going to put in any muscle lines here like that. <clears throat> but I am going to go from here um, to the rest of the, the figure here. And by the way, this is... Um, Kirby was... I, I mentioned Kirby was um, uh, totally uh, not by the book in so many things that he did, and yet by the book at the same time. <clears throat> Kirby could start anywhere in a figure, literally. He, could, he was said to have started up, if this was a comic book page, he would start up in, in the upper left-hand corner, draw a few lines in, draw a few lines here, down there, and he would just go from there. Is that genius? <laughs> you tell me. Now we want a nice strong torso right here. It's leaning forward a little bit. <clears throat> if we measure down <clears throat> from here... <clears throat> We're not going to draw the shield in. That comes later. That comes later. All that extra stuff comes in later. But for right now, I'm going to measure up from the neck and see that it kind of the head kind of starts here. 
and uh, his his character design is just uh, freakishly good. Everything he did had this had this stamp on it that is just f incredibly um, inventive, and in, and with with the kind of force that that um, is specific to uh, really good comic books. Because this is the only place you really you really have a chance to shine with your imagination, is in uh, the comic book uh, medium. Okay, now we can put in the the arm right here, and uh, what is going to be um, the shield. Okay, so that's kind of the way I see the arm going. You guys, see that? Okay. In fact, I'll do this in <clears throat> I'll do this in red so you can see it more clearly. There's the basic shape. There's where the fist is. <clears throat> and if we grab a little bit of blue here, we get where the shield is going to go. Now, you got to think in the way that he's got to be holding this thing, right? So if the straps come to about there, then you're going to then you're going to know that you're <clears throat> you're you're being foundationally correct about where this thing <clears throat> lies on his arm here. Kirby did not draw through this stuff. He, um, like I said, he was uh, he came from a dimension beyond man, where there is a fifth dimension, not four. Okay, now it's time to do a little bit of erasing. We're going to get rid of some of the clutter right here by erasing what's behind the shield. The Golden Guardian. What a cool character. <clears throat> If you, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's the creator of Druna, D R U N D R U U N A. Okay, so we're trying. We got an enunciation problem here that I'm sure he can correct as soon as he uh, he flies in from uh, Tasmania. I'm putting in little details. What's the question that he had? No, I'm I'm afraid I don't. That's that's kind of news to me. But if it's a, it, it, if it, uh, new books tend to be um, uh, out, outside of the, my purview these days, I uh, I live in the past, guys, when things were really good, and I had a good time. So <clears throat> there is um, there is my very simple. These these just show um, gleam lines, reflective lines. That's how people do it in this business race. So do I need to come out a little bit more here? Let's do it just because we're smart. Jonathan says, fun fact, Captain Victory, Kirby's creator, all in characters, is the grandson of Orion. Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers is the true conclusion to the fourth world saga. Yeah, some people would assert that. Um, to me, the only time that Jack really could have uh, finished it is when the time was the time to do it, which is um, before his before his books were actually canceled by Carmen Infantino. No comment in that. But he changed history, and that's not that's not something you want to have on your gravestone. Landon is asking. He says, "How much uh, with how much Steve loves Jack Kirby? I'm curious to know his opinion about Stan Lee." Um, I met Stan Lee. I was fortunate to have met him several times. Uh, I love Stan. He was a very, very magnanimous guy. Um, the, the faults that people point out are just the human qualities that you could point out with anybody. Uh, I saw Stan do the most amazingly uh, decent and charitable things that nobody would ever do. I actually saw him in San Diego one year, standing outside in front of the hotel that he was staying at, and greeting every single person that walked up to the lobby. No. Um, you want to tell me anyone other than Sergio Aragonis that would ever do something like that? So this is going to be a brief one right here. This is literally the end of this broadcast right here. I think I've demonstrated my, my cause. And um, <clears throat> that is how I break down the genius of Jack Kirby in fundamental terms. So if you had a good time... Um, you missed your chance to write in, but there's always uh, reruns where you can write in and, and um, 
uh, give me your take on what I've done so far. If it's helpful to you, I'll keep doing these things. And even if it's not, I'll keep doing it. So until next time, uh, au revoir and off Vita Zane. Take care. You're my superhero, hero. Always gonna take charge. Let go where you bring me through the night. With your cape and epic fights. You're my super warrior. It's true. Flying through the heavens.